How should we act when it comes to climate change? What should we do? Do our actions influence anything? And can we really make a difference? These are questions that you might have considered in the context of impending and existing climate change. We often see discussion around the relative merits of top-down versus bottom-up approaches to tackling climate change. Top-down would be things like government laws and policies regulating different industries, for example. Bottom-up or grassroots actions would be things that individuals and households and communities do to enact positive change and they may, may also influence um, those that are in power, so they might influence that top-down impact. So top-down and bottom-up actions are often linked and influence each other. Everyone has a role to play in helping to curb the worst impacts of climate change. So waste-free living generally exists in that kind of bottom-up grassroots approach, but it can definitely have much broader influence. You can apply waste-free principles if you're running a business or a large organisation or a government. Waste-free living is really only limited by imagination and motivation. We're really strong advocates for doing everything that you can according to the position that you're in, in life. So that means, you know, doing what you can with the money and the time and the energy and the privilege and the information that you have. Waste-free living includes all the obvious visible waste, you know, the sort of stuff that you put in the bin. But to us, it also involves all of the waste that you don't see that occurs upstream in production processes. It's the, the hidden waste that's in pretty much every system that we're a part of. Waste-free living is about making choices to support or avoid certain systems. So as an example, avoiding major supermarkets is doing two things. You're saying, I don't want to participate in, in this system, in the supermarket system, um, and I am going to participate and support this other system over here and divert my money and my energy and my attention to that. So it's a way of um, saying no to, to harmful systems or systems that you don't want to participate in and to prop up and support the systems that you want to live. You can actually live the change that you want to live. And it's when these grassroots kind of actions uh, occur en masse, when lots of people take it up, then that's when those, the collective grassroots action influences those who have a greater level, level of control and power over broader systems, whether it's politicians or corporate leaders. They start to listen. They respond. They're very reactive to the population and what people want they will adapt to what people want but our waste-free living practices don't stop at food packaging we also like to think about where the things that we consume came from uh, what the inputs were to produce them what resources were required um, fossil fuels water energy time human resources uh, and what part of the environment might have been impacted to produce that product. Sometimes it's hard to know all of those inputs. You just have something that you might find in a shop or that you might buy, and you, you don't necessarily know every single kind of chemical component and ingredient and where it came from and how it was made and what, what animals were harmed in the making of that product. You don't always know that. But there is a lot of information out there that can that can give you a good idea of whether something is the better choice out of the, the choices that you have available to you. The things that we consume, however small, are contributing to a much bigger picture around uh, fossil fuel use, consumption, environmental degradation, and uh, having a, a link to the broader global climate processes. So, Every little bit counts. It's easy to be skeptical and, and think that, you know, how do we as individuals have any impact on global climate? I like to think of this in terms of the impact that we collectively as humans have had on the global climate based on the last few hundred years of our activities since industrialization, especially. 
It's that heavy use and reliance on fossil fuels that is forcing the climate to behave in ways that it hasn't before and not while we've been around anyway. And so things are changing at a rapid, rapid rate and the projections are pretty dire. You only need to read the latest IPCC summary reports to see that things aren't improving. Uh, and this is being driven by human behavior. So we can choose to continue to participate in the activities that society expects us to, uh, the, the harmful practices that are normalized around travel and consumption, buying the latest thing and consuming the latest thing and just dispose of, disposing of stuff all the time and not giving it a care. But all of the, the science is saying that if we do that, things are going to get much worse, much more quickly. So the alternative, or an alternative, is to actively participate in something different, in something new, new paths, new systems, and new ways of living. And they don't have to be like extremely different to the way that we're living now. And we have to sort of share that it's awesome so that other people can join in the fun, you know? On its own, the relative physical impact of us trying to live without making waste for about six and a half years is maybe, there could be like 50 or so tons of landfill that we've avoided amongst the five of us, uh, give or take, and maybe a similar amount of recycling. It's a, it's a lot at a, at a household level, but it's an absolute drop in the ocean, no pun intended, compared to the millions of tonnes of waste that's produced in Australia every year. We're talking like 60 million or so tonnes. And the billions of tonnes of waste that's produced globally every year. I mean, that's not the extent of our influence, though. It's not just the waste that we've avoided. It's also, you know, the, the influence that we can have over people, our friends, family, online communities, um, through our e-courses, through giving talks at schools, through our book. Uh, these are all ways that, even just like indirectly, if we're at a, a shop and we're talking to the service assistant about buying something in our own container or our, or our own bag, and another customer next door hears it, you know, and has a think about it and goes home and Googles it, then there's all these tiny little immeasurable influences. And this is just from, you know, two adults and three kids. I, I think that if this attitude of seeking to make the lowest impact possible and actively trying to make as little waste as possible, uh, if this started being normalized and embraced by lots of people, then the effects will be very far reaching. So by considering our waste outputs, so the, the waste that we're not putting in the bin, we're also considering our inputs and the choices that we make and taking into account all of that upstream stuff. And this frees us up to ask questions and to think a bit more intently about our choices, the choices that we have in front of us to consume or not consume. And our goal is to make the best choices that we can when we're presented with a choice and we're privileged enough that we get to make a bunch of choices day to day. Not everyone has the ability to make as many choices as we do. Some people have capacity to make many more than we do, but we've, most of us are given some capacity to make some choices and it's about doing the best with those and seeking to make the, the least wasteful choice where, where you can. So I think waste-free living does have a big role to play in taking action on climate it can have a big impact and we just got to keep showing that it's awesome and doable and have uh, more and more people get on board there's no no better time than now to do it and feel free to ask us any questions that you might have we're going to try and make a lot more videos about this stuff and get practical as well but uh we're just sort of introducing some of these topics and uh, hoping that you're starting to get your head around what it means to to try and live waste free and some of the things that we're thinking about at the moment 
and I'll see you in the next video.